So this is an introductory video about EV. I'm, going to, I'm calling the new version EV2, but that's just an informal name. The formal name is going to be something like EV0.96. Uh, there's a, a readme about the new version of EV that is... Uh, I'm keeping it as, a, as an executable Emacs Lisp file. It is here. And it has instructions for downloading and, and unpacking EV and then some other things that have, that have to be executed inside the Max. So let's follow that here. By the way, uh, I did not explain what it is EV. Many years ago I started to write an article about EV you call it, and I called it a Max and EV or how to automate almost everything. I was not able to finish the article. The article was very bad. I found it impossible to to finish several of the sections, but I showed it to a few friends and at least at least it helped me to to discover several several of the flaws of AV at the time. So I've been trying to fix them and to make EV easier to use and I'm calling the new version AV2. Anyway, the instructions are here. The readme tells us to execute the five lines in black here, not the one in blue. The, the one in blue is something that I added just to, to, to help myself with the presentation because I was sure that I was going to forget many details. Anyway, as, I, as I, I've, I've warned, this is, this, is, this is just an introductory presentation, so I'm going to show just a few features and how to navigate through the documentation and examples. Uh, the plan for the presentation is more or less like this, but I'm not going to follow this this summary right now. And I have automated these instructions a bit, so I, I just need to press enter, but you're going to, to have to type them some, somehow. Let me create the, a temporary directory. Notice that I'm going to, to install EV in a temporary directory, not in my home, just because I thought that most people are going to be paranoid or... or they are not going to think that this is going to be useful for something that they will prefer to use a temporary directory first. So now I am going to download the table and the extra file which is just for helping with the, with the presentation. Now I unpack the table and now I invoke a max. Note, note that I, I'm going to use some extra parameters here, not just invoking a max switch to open evreadme.tl I'm going to use these parameters here that just oh, that will just make a max uh, use my favorite font and my favorite colors and to not load my .mx or, or any other files in the system so here it is we are editing the, the readme as I said the first instructions in the readme tell us to do some things in the shell uh, and we have already done that so we have executed steps 1 to 3 from the instructions and now we need to do step 4 which is to move to the end of, of this file and execute the program there and after executing that program we're going to, to to enter EV mode which means that we are going to have a few other keys available and all the functions from EV available also so, uh, let's go there, let's execute this. Notice that an EV is going to appear here. That's it, the program answered true. And now we have EV mode activated. And after these steps here, there are very brief instructions about what EV can do and which keys you need to, to start with. Well, I'm going to, to follow some of these ideas in these presentations because I do not think that, that this thing is going to, to be enough for beginners but anyway, there's, there's no way to, to put all the instructions in, a, in just a few lines. So this is my, my extra file with the, the help for this presentation. Sorry, just one second. Right. Let me reduce the clutter in the screen. 
uh, and let me make the, the cursor stop blinking. Uh, for me, the, the most important thing in the Max is that the Max is a Lisp environment. It's not really a text editor. People have built a, a Lisp environment with a few extra functions, and on top of that, they built a, an editor and hundreds of other things. But the Max is essentially a Lisp environment in the sense that uh, from anywhere you can enter, enter a Lisp expression and, and, exec and execute it. And as the syntax of, in, of Lisp is, is based, on parent, based on parentheses, if I put the point here and I, and I say to Max, Ctrl X, Ctrl E, which is the, the command that executes the Lisp expression before the point, Max uh, will is smart enough to count the parentheses and to discover that the, the expression that has to be executed is this one. And then it will execute it and it will it will show the result in the echo area which is here. So this function is going to call the uh, this little program is going to call the function plus with arguments two and three. It's going to sum two and three and the result is going to be five. That's it. Five. This one here will multiply 4 and 5, the result is 20. And the one idea that, we're, that we are going to use a lot is that of the, Lisp, of the last Lisp expression in the line. So, in a script for a programming language, or in a program, the, the parser for the, for the programming language it starts from the top from the top of the file and, f and from the left side of each line and most programming languages has a syntax that for comments that say ignore the rest of the line because all the rest of the line is going to be a comment we are going to use this to to put Lisp expressions everywhere so lines that start with a semicolon are comments in the max Lisp and so the beginning of the line is something that is read by the, the Lisp interpreter and the, or in, in the case of a, of a shell script we're going to use a, a hash sign and well anyway and if we start from, from the right side of the line well, we have the last Lisp expression in the line which is something that we are going to use a lot uh, notice that here we have several Lisp expressions that starts the, that call the function eek. This function receives a string and it executes the, the keys described in the string. So this eek here is going to execute this first it moves up and then it, it then it executes control x control e. Let's try. That's it. It moved up and it executed the, the plus two three and it put the result here and for technical reasons it also put the, the new here because new is the, the result of the EK. And uh, I noticed many many years ago that I was using control E, control X, control E a lot, which means go to the end of the line, which is the first control E here, and then execute the Lisp expression before point. So this EEK here is going to move two lines up, go to the end of the line, and then execute this expression here. Let's test. That's it. 20. With the, the garbage new that I explained. And so I created an abbreviation for that. When I type meta E, this is going to do roughly the same as moving to the end of the line and then executing the Lisp expression before point. So meta e is roughly equivalent to control e, control x, control e. That's right, this thing is going to move four lines up, and then move to the end of the line, then execute the last Lisp expression in the line, the result is going to be 20. There. In a, in a very few occasions, we are going to have to execute the, the Lisp expression before point, but without moving to the end of the line. So there's a, another key for that which is harder to type because we, don't, we do not need that often. So the key is meta shift E. So this demonstration here, this E key here, it's going to move 
three lines up, it is not going to move to the end of the line and it is going to, to execute that expression there. That's it. Uh, well, but the meta e, uh, uh, it has it packs several different behaviors in a single function. It uh, it behaves differently when it is invoked with different numeric prefixes. So if I if I evoke meta zero meta e, I'm giving a prefix of zero to a numeric numeric arg a numeric argument of zero to meta e, and the numeric argument zero says. Do not execute the Lisp expression, just highlight it, just highlight it temporarily. So this thing here is going to move six lines up, move to the end of the line, and instead of executing this expression here, which, we, which would give us a, a result of 20 here, it is just going to highlight the expression. That's it. And the new is the result of running the EEK. Uh, what is that for? Is, uh, the idea is that as everything in MX is done with, as, with Lisp expressions, we are going to use Lisp expressions as, as hyperlinks. Suppose that I've, that I've found something interesting, so a file with, with some uh, important information, and I want to, to go back to, to it without having to type its name all the time. Just let me give a, a silly example. Suppose that for some reason the, the version of the current tabball of EV is going to be important. If I want to, to check what the version is, I can open the, the file version in the current directory. So I type Ctrl X, Ctrl F. I get this prompt here and I get an interactive mode in which I can edit the name of the file and tab works for, com for completing the name. And when I type a return, I open that file. Let me go back. Uh, this expression here is not very readable. If I put that in a text, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to think for a bit before understanding what it does. So if I'm going to use Lisp expressions as, as hyperlinks, they have to, to be readable somehow. This one here, find file with the name of the file, is more readable than the one above. So this thing here is OK as a hyperlink. And to follow this hyperlink, I just need to, to put the point anywhere in the line and type meta e, because then the, the point is going to be moved to the end of the line, and then the expression is going to be executed. So just a single meta e here follows the hyperlink. And if I want to go back, as this hyperlink creates a new buffer, what the simplest way is to delete, delete the new buffer. So, uh, going back from a hyperlink is something that is so common that I, that I also created a, a short uh, shortcut for that, which is meta k. Meta k is for killing killing buffer. Uh, sorry, the, to the 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 terminology for deleting buffer in the max is to kill. And so meta k is a variation of the uh, the command that MX uses usually to kill buffers. This thing here is also a hyperlink, but I'm not going to follow it now. Notice that here we have something that is not going to be interpreted either by the Lisp interpreter, because this line is a comment, and neither by meta e, because a meta e in this line is just going to execute this. So this part here is explicitly only for humans. And this is more or less for humans, because it's passive code. Uh, when I load the file ev readme into a max, it is not, this is not going to be executed, but we can execute it by, by hand, by putting the point here and typing meta e. But before following that, this. Uh, let me show some first some some other variations of meta e. In a few occasions, mostly when I'm trying to explain things to people, it is useful to to show the target of a hyperlink in a different window. So if I want to to, to explain what file this is going to to open. I can do this. I can split the, the current uh, MX frame into two windows. 
and then I can go go to the other window look the point is here now and now I can follow the hyperlink so what happens is that in this left side we have the before before following the hyperlink and the right side we have the after we, we can also call this the target of the hyperlink so there's a, a shortcut for that which is mainly for presentations which is meta2 meta e so this EK here is going to execute this with the prefix to sorry let me be more convincing and there's another variant of that that also switches the point to the other on the window it's very similar but after executing it the point is in the target not in the in the source anymore anyway uh, MXPer has a very good help system and you can ask for help on about on almost everything on the Max. So, for example, if you want more information about what Ctrl X, Ctrl F does, Ctrl X, Ctrl F is find file, you can type Ctrl H, K, and then the, the, the key sequence, Ctrl X, Ctrl F. So, Ctrl X, K is something that gives us help on the key. And most of the of the help functions of MX have this prefix, Ctrl H here. So Ctrl H K is the help on keys. And this sequence of keys here, very difficult to read, uh, give us help about Ctrl X, Ctrl F. But notice that, it, that when we execute that, this is going to, to make a it's a bit messy because to go back from that we have to do something more complex than just killing the new buffer I execute it and it, it splits the screen by itself and it shows the, the, the help for Ctrl X, Ctrl F in another window so to navigate in this help if it doesn't fit in the screen I have to go to the other window and then move there and then I can you can use one of the one of the, the keys for window manager in Max that, that people take a long time to to remember to delete that. So I'm going to, to use Ctrl X four zero. And this is a way to go back. So this is an unreadable way to to show help about Ctrl X, Ctrl F. This is a more readable way. This is a, a hyperlink in a Mac, a hyperlink in a Max to the help about find file. It makes exactly the same mess as before, but it's it's even worse because the the result of this is a big string here. Oops, sorry. Uh, the result of this is this big string. So the for a max display that it has to squeeze the screen a bit so it's very messy so one thing that i did in ev was to re-implement several of the of the help functions with with uh, using functions that i could use that i could really use as hyperlinks uh, and that i could follow easily and come back from the from their targets re relatively easy to so the eev version of the describe function above is, is this thing here notice that it it opens the the help in the same page in the same window so i just need to type meta k to go back uh, notice also that it, it opens a temporary buffer this buffer here it does not correspond to a file i might suggest took a string that it, had, that it has that it had in its memory it formatted it some, somehow uh, this is a string associated to find file and I actually generated this part here by itself and it also uh, fontified some parts so this part is, is in italics this part is uh, has become a hyperlink etc etc so Emacs did a lot of work to produce this, this buffer here 
and it is not associated to a file if I say uh, control X control S to try to save it to a file and Max is going to, to ask me where to save it. Uh, all the documentation of, of EV nowadays is in this fun is accessible through these functions here find blah 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 intro and these functions generate temporary buffers just like this function here this uh, the result of, of executing find ev intro is this buffer here notice that the name of the buffer is find ev intro and this one in particular serves as a as a kind of an index to the rest so this is these are the 19 main introductions at the moment and there are also two other introductions here that i'm keeping as appendices because they are not strictly related to ev they're more general they're related to mx and these two are things that I, that I mostly use with beginners when I when I give workshops about EV and the Max and free software. We are going to, to follow them soon. <coughs> so these are the the two most basic introductions. This is the index for EV and this is the, the index for this is a kind of a help for Max. Notice that it's full of hyperlinks. So at many places we have a description of something and then C and a hyperlink. And remember that when we follow this, which is the 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 help, the, the main max function for help on a key, we get just this text here. Uh, the prefix of that of that uh, help key here was control H, which is the, the prefix that the Max uses for its, its help keys. And EV implements uh, another kind of help using the prefix meta H. So meta H, meta K will give us a, a, a kind of of help for control X, control F, but as we are going to see, it's a very weird kind of help. So that's why I, I took so long to explain it. Uh, here it is. This is a temporary buffer. Most of its lines are hyperlinks. Uh, this one is something that we saw before. Uh, if we follow it, we are going to, to look at the description of find file, just as, as we said, as we saw before. And this is a temporary buffer, but it is edit editable. We can uh, look at, we can, the, the main idea is here, is here is that we can not only follow these hyperlinks, that, that, but that it is very easy to cut and paste these hyperlinks to other places. So these kinds of temporary buffers are mainly for constructing hyperlinks and copying them to other places. So for example, if I can copy this thing and then go back and copy it to here. This is not a very realistic example, but whatever. And uh, I think that I forgot to, to explain something very important. Lots of functions in EV, they generate temporary buffers, and one of the conventions about these temporary buffers is that the first line in those buffers, they regenerate the buffer. So I can do any mess that I want here. And if I execute this, I regenerate the buffer. And if I copy this to another place, I also generate that buffer. So these introductions here, they are temporary buffer, buffers in the sense that I can do any mess that I want here. I can explore with things here. Oh damn. I'm not sure if I did if I've explained this before before because I rehearsed this 
well anyway uh, so we can edit these things and we can make any mess that we want here and we don't do not need to be worried about destroying the documentation of EV, EV because this thing is this buffer here it is not it's not associated to a file so it's not going to to modify the help it's really for playing with it is it's a tutor tutorial and a sandbox and notice that it is very easy to regenerate it with this command here and it is very easy to copy one of these hyperlinks to other places and to use it as a hyperlink to one of the introductions so until now we saw one way of going to places which is by using hyperlinks the default way in MX is by using keys like Ctrl X, Ctrl F for opening a file or Ctrl H K for the help on the key but the EV-ish way is to use uh, Lisp code and we are now going to see a way to, to go to several predefined places without having to to, to follow a, 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 a Lisp expression that is already written down if we, if we type just meta j what we're going to well, well sorry the name of this feature is ee job so if we type meta j we're going to to go to the main index of targets for ee jump you need to be, to have a bit of practice to interpret that of course but the idea is that if i call meta j with the prefix 10 it is going to execute this If I call it with prefix 11, it is going to execute this. If I call it with, with prefix 2, it is going to, to execute this, which is, which is a hyperlink, and etc. And if I, for, if I forget what, what is the, the prefix that I want, I just need to type meta j, and I'm going to, to go to this place, which is the source code of vjump, and I can see this summary here written in a in a human language and this summary here which is kind of similar but it is written in Lisp so this one is readable with with some effort and this one is meant to be readable with less effort um, and I just want to mention that to go to the top level of, of, of the documentation which is find EV intro <coughs> the prefix is 5 that's it and to go to the to the basic documentation for for newcomers from max the prefix is true so to execute this that is meta true meta j when I execute it I go to find a max intro which has all that stuff and here a series of key sequence that I recommend people to learn and links to the to parts of the max manual that describe them and meta 50j goes to the to the readme and this other thing is very important uh, let me pretend that i have convinced you to install ev so now you want to download ev in a more permanent directory Remember that we have downloaded it to, to a directory in slash tmp, which is temporary. And we also want to configure your .mx to load EV on startup. Not necessarily EV mode, but at least load EV in the sense that it's going to be easy to turn on and to turn off EV mode. Uh, I could have done that with, with just instructions in English like here in the readme sorry ah we are already in the readme so I, I could have done that by just uh, explaining how to do that as item number eight or 
or number six that I have deleted or whatever. But I think it's. But I thought that it was more interesting to do that in an in an executable way. So let's see what what this what this is going to do. Notice that it starts with find, and it ends with links. So it's going to create a temporary buffer. And remember the convention that the first line regenerates the buffer. Here we have several calls to find the EV update links, each one with a different parameter. If I execute this one, I'm going to, to give this parameter to find the EV update links. It does not look like a directory, but if we execute that, we are going to see how the rest of the buffer is generated from a template. All places that are, that are replaced by, by a given directory got replaced by uh, this thing here between curly braces. Uh, now I'm going to modify one of these expressions here to select the, the, the directory in which I want to download and install AV. I'm going to regenerate the buffer just by executing it. Note that the first expression regenerates the buffer with the current parameter. The, and the current and the current parameter is home slash ev2. Okay, so this part here is something very important. This corresponds to the to the other main idea of ev, which is to use a max as a way to control to control external programs. A max is made to uh, to handle anything that looks like text, and terminals like this are text. But terminals have a, a very primitive interface in the sense that you can only edit the last line, and it's not very practical to save the the history of what you typed. There are some comments for that, like in the shell, the comment history handles the the last the last given comments in some way but it's not very clean i mean i do not feel it's very practical and many years ago people have implemented in a max ways to uh, to run terminals inside the max so what we are going to do is that we are going to uh, to create a terminal that runs a shell here it is And this shell here can be executed, can be used in the usual way. But as this is a max, we can also use it in other ways. We can move the, the, the cursor around and we can change things here as all these things are text. But if we issue a command here and type a return, then this command is going to be executed. So it tries to be the best of both worlds. A usual shell in which you, in which you can use issue commands and um, something weirder that you can edit. So it's a mix between a common buff, a normal buffer and a shell. I mean, uh, a terminal running a shell. Uh, <coughs> The main key for executing these kinds of things that are that I call e pitch blocks is F8. And, and the F8 is it works differently when a line starts with the red star and when a, and when a line does not start with the red star. If I type F8 in this line here that, st that starts with the red star, it is going to execute all the rest of the of the line after the star has lisp. And also, F8 always moves the cursor down, except when, when there are errors. So, F8 here would execute this, this expression, F8 here would execute this, and F8 here would execute this. And then we would be on a line that does not start with the red star. And when we type F8 on a line that does not start with the red star, what MX does is that it takes the contents of the current line and it sends to the to the to the terminal 
the terminal that is running here as if the, the user had typed that text there. So instead of having to, to edit the command here, I can edit the command here and send it to the shell. Let's try. Ta -da, ta -da. Let's change this because I want to erase the directory that I used in the rehearsal for this video. Now let me create the directory again. Let me switch to it. This is irrelevant, but I've kept that anyway. Uh, and now let's download the tarball in this directory that is in my home. Now we can, we can even test that that we have just unpacked. If I execute this, I'm going to invoke another instance of the max. I'm oh, sorry. On ev readme.l Oh, sorry. I forgot to unpack. Here, let's repeat. Done. Now I started on the max on the readme. But notice that this readme is now in my home directory. So it is not the one that I'm using for the for the, the demo of the video. And now the other thing that we need to do is to tell Emacs to load EV2 by default. So we need to change our our .mx file to make it pay attention to, to that directory in the sense that it's going to look for modules there. And we have to tell MX to load this file here, ev all that loads all the, the packages for me from ev And there's also this other line that is optional, of course, that is to turn ev mode on. So if you do not want this, just comment it out. Uh, let me mark this and copy it to the kill ring. I mean, this is sort of a copy and paste, but using Emacs terminology. And now I'm going to execute this mysterious Lisp expression here that is going to, to split the window in a certain way and open my .mx in, another, in the other window. This is not a very realistic test because it shows a part of my .mx. If you are an Emacs newbie, you, this this thing is going to be empty because you do not have a .mx at the moment. You're going to create it now. Anyway, here is your .mx and you should select where you want to put the, the initialization code for AV. Let's so pretend for a moment that I'll put it here and to load it before, it, before everything else. So I just copied what, we, what it was in the kill ring to, to this place. So now, when the max starts up, it's going to add this path here to the load path, and it is going to require this thing here, here, searching for this path. And this file here, ev to all, as we will see, is just a series of requires. It can also be used as, a, as an index to the source code because each of these things here is a hyperlink. So this loads all the modules. And if you want to AV to, to start up when you load the max, just uncomment this. Anyway, do not want to, to change my dot max. Let me go back. Let me go back to the to the tutorial to, to my notes for this presentation by the way so I have explained what EV does sorry what F8 does I have explained with 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 a small e pitch block that controls a shell but it can control we can use uh, F8 to to control essentially any interactive program with a, with a command line interface 
I mean, at least the ones that we can run inside the terminal and, and run this terminal inside the max. Uh, here, if you follow, if you take a look at the, the introduction about the pitch, the, the concepts are all explained there. Here, the F8 is explained in, in details. And, the, and here are some examples. And this is, a, is a, this is an example that uses another target. Uh, I'm going to alternate between two targets. So first I create a shell target. I'm going to run this echo there just to create a file slash temp slash o. And I'm going to, cre to, to create another target, which is a terminal running Python. Now I'll, I'll run this command here that prints the contents of slash tmp slash o. And now when I type, uh, when, when, I, when I type F8 on this line, this will switch to the to the other target, to the shell target that is still running. So this means that we can have several terminals at this, oh, running at the same time, but only one, one of them is the default target. And now if I type F8, this is going to, to be sent to this target here. Uh, I think that now I can explain why we have these sequences of three lines starting with the red star. The first one selects a target, the second one kills the current target, and the third one reconstructs a, ta 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 a target. So even if the current target is, is shell, I can reconstruct the, the Python target by running these, two, these three red star lines. If I just issue the, an, an epitch kill now, the target that would be killed, the, the buffer that would be killed, the terminal that would be killed would be the, the one that is running the shell. But if I first switch to the, the default target to Python, then I kill it. Then I create a new Python target. Then I can be sure that I'm running uh, a terminal with a, with a Python program that has just been started. So to make experiments more easy to reproduce, it's, it's, it's easier to reproduce them in controlled conditions. For example, to reproduce them in shells that have, have just been started anew. And so for years I've been controlling external programs by preparing scripts that I can reproduce very easily. And one of the, the ways of preparing these scripts is interactively using F8 and these red star lines. I do not have time to, to explain all these, all the subtleties about the pitch now. I'm going to leave that for another video, but uh, the tutorial about the pitch should be quite clear about what you can be, what you can do. And I'm also going to show uh, something. Well, this is just to show something more impressive. Uh, this thing here is full of mysterious commands, but this is a way to create several uh, targets running at the same time, each one in a different window, and keep all these windows visible. So this demonstration here, it interacts with the shell and with the Python, each one in a different window. We send this command here to the, to the Python interpreter, then we see, switch the shell, then we, we send this command here to the shell, then we go back to the Python interpreter and we execute this. And the trick is that we have programmed the, the Python interpreter to, to, interpret, to interpret EE as meaning read the contents of, of a temporary script and execute them. Now I'm going to, to uh, change the contents of the, of the temporary script here, go back to Python and execute that again. And notice that now the temporary script has created a function called foo and called that function to, with, with the parameter 5 and printed the result and foo receives a number and returns the square of that number. 
Now the function foo is defined, and if I execute this, I can print a square of 6. So we can use several things like this to, to create programs interactively. But I'll say more about that in other videos, not now. And let me just remind you that we have an a pitch block here, which is something in which is, that should be quite elementary to, to run. So this part here is means to be executed in this way. Blah, 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 blah. Remember that you, you might have to, to change the parameter here on the top to use either home slash ev or or home slash ev2 or oh well, let me show you something different suppose that we want to use this longer directory here now we start the, the shell a new shell we delete that directory and when we try to, to make the directory something that does not work we can we cannot create that directory because this other directory here does not exist so we can either duplicate this line and create another line that creates the directory home slash my test or we can create we can change this command to add a minus p sorry lowercase p and now it can now it creates that directory and by the way it is very easy to get help on 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 a shell command like uh, mkd uh, i'm not going to explain this in details now but it's easier to convert the name of a command into a hyperlink and execute it so this opens the man page about mk not about make dear and here is another hyperlink that jumps straight away to, to the explanation of the minus p i'm not going to execute that and I'm, I'm in the final remarks well one of the one of, one of my objectives with this presentation was to convince more people to download the EV and to install the, to install it in their machines uh, I've tried to make the the package for EV as non-invasive as possible uh, it should not interfere with other things that you have if you if you just load it and, and start it with with EV not, not turned off like this uh, then it's not going to define any functions with, with weird names all the functions we need in EV except for one have names that either start with find or start, or start with EE if EV mode is turned off then it is not going to change your key bindings the EV key bindings are only going to be active if you turn the EV mode on you can turn EV mode on and off by typing meter x ev mode so turned off turned on you can also turn ev mode on and off by executing this or this ev mode 1 activates ev mode and if you want to take a look at the list of all key bindings it is here you can ask for help on EV on any way you like. Even if EV mode is turned off, you can use the MX uh, help key on, on the function control HF EV mode. And then you get the help for EV mode, which describes all the, the keys. And there you can see that it's just meta E and also meta uppercase e, also, uh, meta k, meta uppercase k, fh, meta j, and several key bindings with meta uppercase letter, which, which is something that the max do, do not use by default, and also 
meta h for several uh, help-like keys that create temporary buffers. And uh, that's it. Let me turn AV mode on because I'm too addicted to it. And the main key is just meta j. It jumps to, to this index here where we can and once there you can remember what are the main keys and what are the other starting points in the documentation. And also this help here explains how you can add your own targets. But this is an advanced topic. So and if you want to go to the to the top level of the of the introductions you type meta5 meta j. That's it. And if you just want to take a look at the help files, but without uh, installing installing any, anything, I have converted some of the files to HTML in a way that makes the most hyperlinks work. Let's visit this. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Oh, damn. Here, here's the top level of the documentation converted to, to HTML. So these hyperlinks here work. If I if I follow this, I can go to the to the documentation about AV in the browser. Uh, and uh, another way to, to look for information is to, to go to my home page. You can just uh, type Eduardo Ox at Google and it probably is going to, to show my, my home page, which is e e angelzag at w.net. It's going to be the, probably the, the first option. And my email is this. And uh, when I'm using IRC, when I'm connected to RC, my, my username is edrx and I always log automatically into the, the channel hash ev and of course it is, it's at free node. That's it.